Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the state of the India's infrastructure, particularly the companies who seem to be sinking deeper into the red and its impact on the non-performing assets of the banks. On in the, from what we see, we seem to be now approaching another crisis of the non-performance assets of the banks. Yeah. Essentially, the telecom sector, mm. which owes anything between 2 to 3 lakh crore rupees yes. to the banks, mm. is also approaching a state of crisis? Absolutely, because ultimately, I guess, when you try to artificially generate, uh, you know, uh, create some sort of a demand, either by uh, giving excessive credit to consumers or you provide too much supply, which we've seen happening both in power and probably telecom. Because once you hit the missed call club, people who don't make calls but expect you to make that call and they just keep a cell phone for, you know, at the lowest possible average revenue per user, then telecom's in a crisis. And once Geo has come in, if there's no earning, no revenue, they're not going to be able to pay back the loans that they have. And that's so the problem this, we're facing. The telecom companies have been talking about what is called the predatory pricing. Yes. The fact that you have switched completely to a data model, hmm. essentially, and yes. you're also subsidizing that probably from other revenues that hmm. Reliance had, yeah. which is the oil hmm. revenue. Hmm which was essentially going to provide the initial push to Geo. Yes. And the argument of the telecom company has been this is a predatory pricing model. Yeah. It wants us to sink mm. and therefore have only Geo as a player. Mm. And as we know, even with BSNL and Mahanagar uh, Nigam, MTNL, yeah. we are seeing the same phenomena. But the All telecom companies, the... if one looks at Airtel and uh, Vodafone or Idea, the people who came in first, they did the same thing. It's not as if that, uh, you know, they got these largesses from the government of India. And you are one of the people I remember when I was a relatively young reporter. I recall interviewing you in those days in the 99. You know that late period when that Is new that telecom the, policy and all those things were coming. The whole issue was coming in from uh, what they had quoted as the license fees. They yes. shifted to a, a revenue so share. So they got this huge largest and they had these so-called sunrise industries, nice tax uh, holidays. So they could give very cheap talk time to people, people switch to that. What is that? You killed MTNL and BSNL doing that. Now someone else has come and done that to you. It was bound to happen. Well, you know, the issue about predatory pricing is who does it to whom. Yeah. So yeah. accepting that. And the issue for MTNL, BSNL was even mm. bigger because they were not given mobile licenses initially. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, they came in much later. Yeah. And then when they did do well, Absolutely. relatively well, mm. their revenue was again taken away under various strategies. Yes. Under the 2G scamming one of them yeah, exactly. when they are supposed to give infrastructure free yeah. to other new entrants. So right from the beginning, and this is one of this ties into the idea of NPA. Right from the beginning, we've seen two things happen. One is that uh, Companies in India, infrastructure companies especially, have raised money from the capital markets and even there, the equity has probably been 20%. 80% has been funded mostly by State banks. Bank of India and government banks, Gov the, banks, the public sector, which is, and often probably the chairman or some senior person got a call and said that this guy should be given the loan. Right? In fact, the core sector lending went to the private sector yeah. as a relaxation of the policies of the government at exactly. one point. Exactly. This is where it starts from. Now, the point is that on the face of it, it looked like, wow, look at these massive airports being built. Look at these bridges. The private sector is booming and Indians are going and buying steel companies outside, car companies outside. India is now a superpower and people were consuming because they were getting personal loans. Someday this was bound to collapse. So, leaving out the consumer boom part yeah, of yeah. it, let's look at the infrastructure. Hmm. What you're saying is the infrastructure boom that we saw, yeah. telecom being one of them. Hmm. Of course, power sector did see a boom in terms of generating companies, yes, yeah. because that's also de-licensed yeah, virtually. Yeah, yeah. And this was really fueled by the public sector banks. Absolutely. Essentially out of your and my money, Absolutely. people's money. Yeah. And this is where today hmm. the bubble is bursting. Is that Absol what you're saying? I'm saying uh, the reason I brought in that consumption thing is because th the story was sold that India has 1.3 billion people and maybe at that time less. But the one point, and this is going to keep increasing. They're only going to consume. You are giving some people virtually stuff for free, 
right? They were consuming. Everyone consumes if you give it to a free. And that was being sold to raise funds. So I'm not saying that it was all corruption, but many public sector bank chairmen, if you speak to them, they said, we believe there'll be growth. We were told there'll be growth. There will be. But, you know, yeah. I would even argue that yeah. there was a growth. Yeah. And because the uh, you gave MAFI to the, what is called the license fees yeah, yeah. and convert it to mm. revenue sharing. Yeah. And revenue sharing mm. was a drop from 6% mm. to 2% mm. and so on. Mm. That there was a genuine growth at that point Absolutely. of time. But mm. it was really bankrolled by ours and your savings. Absolutely. People's yeah, savings. Yeah. Now, if we take that away mm. and consider that this is really funded by the public sector banks, then essentially this is in no way yeah. different from what would have happened mm. if they had actually all also funded the, the BSNL, yeah, yeah, MCNL from essentially bank loans. I mean, one of the things that people tell you all the time is that private sector is much more efficient. They're efficient at selling things to you. And I mean, take, once you bought it, and, after that, I don't take, know. Yeah. And borrowing from the banks. Yeah, borrowing. Much more, yeah, much more much efficient more, than that. Much more efficient. And not paying back the loans. Yes. All these things are they're very much more efficient. And if you compare salaries, one should compare what a public sector person gets and what a private sector, and then see whether they have the same amount of efficiency. But the, ultimately, the basic point here remains that this has been a bubble created by credit. So when we look at, and that's a point also to be made, you know, the Congress party nowadays argues, look at how much... Uh, there was investment, high investment. I think close to 30% of uh, GDP was being was the investment rate. And now it's dropped to less than 20% or something like that. Well, that investment was because you were calling people and saying, here, take this money and invest it. And there were no takers for what they were producing. So when one talks about power sector, let's say, there's been massive generation. And at one point, the government of India was saying, we are now a power surplus country. What does that even mean when most people probably put on one bulb? So, uh, Odindo, that brings us to the second part of it, mm. is that consumption, if it does not increase, of the people, yeah. then these bubbles at a certain point will really Absolutely. burst. Absolutely. But what you're seeing here mm. is on one side that this bubble is being uh, pushed mm. by saying we'll give more latitude to the big Cop capital more tax relief, yeah. more loans, mm. make things easier for mm. them to take loans. But if ultimately mm. the economy does not expand in terms of the buying power of the people, what yeah. you're saying is yeah. that's where the block is. What all, all that it has done is essentially created these huge valuations in the stock market till 2008. Some of these biggest infrastructure companies which were being valued on the basis of what they were going to build. Right, the replacement cost, as they'd say, of what they are building or what they will own. All the power companies. Where are they today? They're, they've collapsed. Their market cap has dropped dramatically because they have no takers for what they produce. If one looks at power, so if you are going to say that Indians can buy power at 15 rupees per unit, that is ridiculous. Absolutely. Right. So you're forcing straight electricity boards to make these private companies viable by buying power from them at things which are profitable for them and then selling it to people at a loss, taking it a loan. So it is essentially socializing profits and privatizing, uh, sorry, so, uh, privatizing profits and socializing losses. That's what you're doing. Yes, it, ultimately, we'll you know, have to pay for it. If, if we really look at it, look at that, mm. what was the original model? Was the infrastructure will be built by the state? Absolutely. Because these are long gestation mm. projects. Mm. They create multiplies the rest of the economy yeah. and therefore they drive the economy mm. Mm. but because they take a long time to bear fruit mm. in mm. terms of returns mm. therefore they should be bought by the state yeah. now what we have done is we have really followed the same model in terms mm. of the money that has been put into them that's come from public coffers it, and but indirectly now owned yeah, indirectly it doesn't banks. it doesn't appear yeah. i mean if you ask someone so that why should uh, so-and-so, why should this company have the rights? So they'll say because they have the money, but they don't have the money. 80% of it is actually public funds picked up from public sector banks. They had 20% of the money. That 20%, as uh, my former colleague Srinivasan Jain was told by a very senior corporate, that, uh, you know, the point is that you have to show 20% equity. So we inflate the total cost. We inflate the cost from 100 to 120 and therefore... The bank gives us 196. 
80 percent of 120. So we have to actually put out only four percent. And this is what is called the. Give me 96 percent. I'll become a capitalist. Over, I'm sure. Over invoicing. You are under, right, over invoicing. Under invoicing. <laughs> yeah. Then that's exactly. The, that's, yeah, the, that's. This is what's called the Enron model, by the way. <laughs> you know, that's what Enron was yeah. doing. Mm. But leaving all of that out, mm. we are hitting right now the end of this road mm. for what would be called private financing of infrastructure, which you, as you rightly yeah. said, was really public financing by another name. Yes. And if we see all the infrastructure sector, mm. from the housing, roads, irrigation projects, mm. whatever you talk about, yeah. hydroelectric power, mm. uh, thermal power, yeah. renewables, again, going mm. the same way. Mm. And now we see telecom as well entering mm. that. All of it would show that the sec the crisis of the Indian economy really stems at the moment from infrastructure. Exactly. It actually stems, as you said, that it stems from the fact that the government directly doesn't want to spend because somehow it fears that it will show up as debt on its books as fiscal deficit. So let the public sectors, which it owns, public sector banks, give the loans and have these so-called assets because on the bank's uh, books <laughs> alone is an asset and no one's going to return that. So uh, again, I'll give an uh, example of one of India's top uh, corporates of uh, the 80s and 90s. One journalist who was close to him asked him that what do you think happens when interest rates, does it help you? So he said that when you don't give money back, then what's the interest rate? So that's their attitude. That's their yeah. attitude. As they, you know, yeah. Malia's assets in mm. the airlines yeah. was two and a half aircraft. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they had yeah. a number yeah. of aircrafts flying, but they yeah. were all on lease. Yeah. So effectively no capital asset whatsoever. So the essential problem remains that here are these banks which have actually in, uh, I mean, in technical terms, probably not taken our money because every time they actually create a loan, effectively some would argue they've created money, right? So they've essentially created a deposit on the I, side. I'm of saying that. as essentially citizens yeah, of the citizens. country, we but we'll own have to take, that debt. We, I mean, at the end of the day, someone has to pay for that debt, whether the government does it by recapitalizing banks, by printing more money or through bonds or whatever they do, it is private saving. So every time the fiscal deficit increases... Let's put the it this way. Yeah. This is public money. Whatever public, you whoever, create. Yeah. Public money. Because the state creating, say, deficits or creating printing money, yeah. both effectively is our money because we are the state. So if the, if the state had actually continued to own and run these, uh, even not run, just own, own these infrastructure projects as you said or power companies maybe we wouldn't have seen this bubble because ultimately it's a bubble you could say wow india grew so fast infrastructure grew so fast but who paid for it where is it no, is that a large part of the for instance the thermal power stations yeah. ntpc was building them they behaved almost like private sector yeah, absolutely but ran them much better exactly and mm -hmm. actually ran them at a much higher levels of efficiency than anything private sector yeah, did. And th these are matter of public record so and mm. ntpc bought from bhl mm. also equipment from the indian companies mm. so boomed the indian e economy the productive yes. assets also increased also production increased while buying the biggest help mm. that the indian private sector did was actually buying buying handsets from China, <laughs> buying, buying yeah. power plants mm. from China. Yeah. Say, the people might have thought that mm. Siemens and GE would yeah. be the beneficiaries. No, 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 no. all the beneficiaries are <laughs> really Chinese companies. So the manufacturing yeah. boom mm. of because of the Indian private sector took mm. place, in whatever China. it did took place in China, China. Uh -huh. while the peak companies which are buying in India, mm. which were public sector, mm. both mm. in terms of buying as well in terms of selling, yeah. BHL and ATPC mm. being the example, mm. both of that we actually broke because mm. we went to private sector and we also forced NTPC mm. to buy with global tenders, buy from outside. Mm. And of course we are turning BHL into another one of those One of those loss things which you will later sector. say, oh, public sector is public sector. So uh, my, my uh, submission here is that if the state, if this had remained in the state sector, then growth would have been much more uh, stable. stable. It would have been slower, but it would have been planned. People would have known, okay, this is the amount that we can do, this is the money we have. Dreams have been sold. 
I'm not saying everyone was, uh, that there's corruption all over. There was corruption, there's no doubt. But at the same time, banks have thought that, oh, I must lend because I will get so much back. I will become this huge bank as I go on. And uh, public sector bank chairman thought, I will become powerful. Maybe I'll become the RBI uh, you know, governor if I do well. Now, these dreams were sold. Corporates, a lot of times, siphoned off money, took them away. They were... They ended up with things which they couldn't sell. If one looks at power companies, again, they had built capacity. They could generate. State electricity boards weren't giving them power purchase agreements. And without a power purchase agreement, Coal India wasn't going to give them coal. It's as simple as that. So, no, uh, Arindo, a little huh. bit of that history yeah. is a lot of the companies did not want power purchase agreements because they thought as merchant power they'd make more money. M yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I'm, uh -huh. I'm privy to a lot of this contract. <laughs> okay, great. So we have yeah. seen that this is also what yeah. was a miscalculation. Mm -hmm. But coming back to the other issue, mm. that the solution would be really looking at what other countries are doing, mm. including China, which yeah. is really a healthy infrastructure com com very healthy, healthy infrastructure companies mm. which are continuously expanding, of mm. course, with public funds. Yeah. So that would have and been... And public ownership. Public ownership. So, I mean, you use public funds, let the public own it. Yes, absolutely. So mm. this would have been for us a safer route to go yeah. rather than... Maybe slower, on. but steadier. And now we are facing this massive crisis where banks are saddled with NPAs. They can't get out of it. They take... It's a nice term, haircut. Right? Yeah, you see, it's all a nice and benign term, haircut. Haircuts mm -hmm. ultimately what you and I take, and we yeah. are really going bald at this rate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so not much yeah. haircuts left yeah. to do. Yeah. But mm. last part of it is that this government does not seem to have any other ideas except repeating the same. Absolutely. So we don't see anything different. Now they're talking about separating the wire from the electricity. Mm -hmm. In terms of physics, it's yeah. difficult. <laughs> I don't know how they'll do it economically. Yeah. But this is what is being talked about. Distribution mm. companies do not know how to do distribution. Mm. If we just remove the electricity from the wires, <laughs> then this will work. Yeah. Okay. So given all of it, mm. we don't seem to have don't seem to have any new ideas either. No, because it requires a very radical change. I mean. Just as there was a slow beginning from the early 80s uh, of what we call liberalization and structural reforms, and then it picked up, and by 1991, 91 is the kind of watershed. Cut off, yeah, right? so to say. When everything changes. Similarly, you need a watershed moment now where you reverse some of what has gone on, and no one's going to do that because all power today, political power, has actually coalesced in the hands of a few very large corporates in a certain sense. They kind of are able to manage policy and the nitty gritties of policy, almost like License Raj period. Well, which I they, think which this is back to the license, clearer. not License Raj, but Licentious Raj. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have the Adadis, the yeah, Ambanis absolutely. who are on the crosshairs yeah. and various others beside who seem to be at the moment in the, uh, mm -hmm. shall we say, getting from airports to the new restructured telecom yeah. power, all of it seems to be increasingly powerful. And since no one else was being able to make money, what the government did was it reduced corporate taxes. Now, corporate taxes in terms of actual value, maybe one and a half percent goes out. But as a percentage of profit, that one and a half percent is a lot. So suddenly you have a gain of 10 percent in your profit compared to last year. So everyone's happy again. Uh, have they reduced any uh, prices? Have the biscuit prices, which were supposed to go down if corporate tax, have they gone down? Has consumption gone up? Have they given anything? No. So this, is, this government now decides to basically give SOPs to corporate to India because it uh, to the larger and there are some big business houses which get the actual benefits. They control media. So the entire messaging is also being controlled. So that's that we are now in a space which you know is a what would be called a plutocracy. I don't know if you uh, are familiar with the city group report which was withdrawn of I think 2005 or something where this person had written a uh, thing saying the U.S. is a plutocracy, which is controlled. There's no democracy here. It is controlled by rich people, 1%. And we should only cater to this 1%. So you should only buy things which are, which are bought by these 1%. India is actually that. And in fact, 
from 1%, they're going to 0.1%. Yeah. We are um, going from, yeah. say, mm. what would have been earlier considered 20%, 30%, yeah. to increasingly 1%. That's a tragic trend exactly. we seem to follow. So if this NPA crisis has to be seriously solved, then that serious solving requires government to enter, solve it. And maybe forget about these Basel II norms and uh, Basel IV now, uh, norms which, are, which we are committed to follow. But again, do you do it through fiscal deficit, which actually puts hands in the money of the rich? It's their savings. Or do you do it by raising taxes of the rich? Right now, frankly, even the rich are not doing that well. Many of the rich are not doing that well as they were used to. So I don't know what the solution is. It is almost a stage of... You know, as you said, hmm. a new uh, Rubicon has to be crossed. Absolutely. And if that doesn't happen, we're yeah. looking at continued crisis. Thank you very much, Arindo, for being with us discussing with us the rather boring and tedious <laughs> issue about the fiscal <laughs> deficit <laughs> to the fisc to the finances of the country and the companies. Thank I you hope we've been uh, passionate enough to make people think that this is important. That it is not some remote <laughs> thing yeah. happening, but it's happening to their pockets. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. This is all the time we have in NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick and our other discussions. Thank <laughs> you.